to me, but to him. Yeah. In this world, you are rare. Yes. Yeah. Folks don't get up and go to church no more. No. Right? I can get up and go to church, right? Yeah. There's some folks that like to turn on the TV now because COVID seems to have taught them that they can, what do you call it now? Bedside Baptist. Bedside Baptist, right? I can just turn the TV <laughs> on, find somebody I like looking at for a little while and call it the church. No, he said, forsake not the assembly of ourselves. Right? About? There's some accountability here. Here, right? Yeah. You know, when you miss a few and then you come, then you gotta come in and then you gotta act like you ain't. Because there's some 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 accountability there. There's some some I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks and where you've been and what you've been doing, and we gotta catch up a little bit. Yeah, that's what God has for that. That I am sharpening eye. Y'all well, are we are we ready to sharpen one another? Because yeah. that's what this is for when he talks about the gospel and he says what it does to it, it is like a two-edged sword, because if it don't get you going, it's going to get you cut. Right? I'm a parole agent by trade. Just retired. Somebody say it. Hey. Hey. 28 years. And we have a, a, a manadnock baton. I don't know what that where that name comes from, right? And then what we would do is if you swing one way, uh-huh. right? And But you're over here in the baton, then automatically you got to come back. That's what the gospel does. Yeah, yeah. The gospel, if you miss it the first time, it's going it's to catch you. Mm-hmm. Exactly, but we do so willingly submitting ourselves to it so that we can be cleansed and prepared and refined yeah. so that when we, we walk out of these doors, you go back to the apartment, to the neighborhood, mm-hmm. to the job, and you can be ready to do his will. Yeah. Y'all, let's work to be done. There's it's, it's a few more here than, than, than normal. Um, for each congregation, right? Because yeah. folks don't get up and go to church no more. Yeah. But we have to set an example. Yeah. What, what did we say last week? Nevertheless. 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 Mm-hmm. Nevertheless. Mm-hmm. Nevertheless. Don't matter what anybody else is doing. The word of God stands. Yes. Right? Amen. Have you told one of your children that before? Oh, yeah. No matter what you do. God ain't changing for you. You won't need to change for him. Amen? Amen. Uh, that is not our text. <laughs> so I guess we better get to it because I don't want to hold you guys more than two hours. <laughs> Let's see if y'all paying attention to that. <laughs> um, Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. I thank you for your children. I thank you because they are yours and not mine. I thank you that you are our Father, and you look down upon us with kindness, with love, with tenderness, Father, and you desire that we eat, so you feed us from the table that you spread, from your gospel. Father, feed us and feed us well. It is in your name and in the name of your Son, and I will say, Christ Jesus, and no other name that I pray. Amen. 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 So we are still in the book of Philippians, going through the whole book of Philippians, right? So where we are right now is is, is we're trying to conclude some, uh, uh, well, well uh, a text that we know and we love. A couple of words in our culture, a couple of, a couple of things in this gospel that, that really mean something to us in particular, right? And it means something because of our history. However, uh, we, we can use history for what it's worth. Mm-hmm. However, our motivation every single day, what did we coin last week? We have a forward facing, mm-hmm. future focused faith. Yeah. That's five F's in a row, mm-hmm. right? That is my best alliteration. Do we have any teachers in here? <laughs> I need an A for that, one, right? I think you're right. My wife's a teacher. That's a great, right? I don't know if I ever did that in my whole life, right? All of my, when I sat in Pastor John's garage and, and we taught and we were taught how to formulate an outline. And when we were, and he was like, well, you can do some of those things. And those things, those little things that help you remember those things very effective, right? That's some of my best theological lessons put to good use, y'all. Forward facing, future focus face. So we want to complete the thought today, and we'll do our best to do so today. Let's read our text from Philippians 3rd chapter, verses 12 through 16. Not, Paul says to the church at Philippi, 
not that I have already obtained or have already become perfect, but I press on. Those are those words I was talking about that mean a little something. I don't it, right? Yeah, we got some songs talking about pressing on, yeah. right? If, if you've been in anybody's church in times past, in any of our churches, and needless to say, you've heard them, but I press on, Paul says, so that I may lay hold of that which also was laid, I was laid hold of by Jesus Christ. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. I'll say I have work to do. But one thing I do forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on. For the goal of the prize of the upward call of Jesus Christ. Let us therefore, as many as are perfect, if you have a different translation, it may say mature. Because perfect, of course, we're not going to be perfected until when? Until we get changed, right? Exactly. Y'all, y'all, y'all want to? I can't wait. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? That's, that's again. That's where I get stuck. I get stuck in my study on those, those, those future focused things on those. Okay, wait a minute. What? How does that work, right? And it says, who gets changed first? Who can, who rises first? The dead in Christ will rise first, right? So let's say he comes today. Y'all dead? Not yet. Not yet, right? Y'all want y'all want to go to heaven, no, right? Oh, yeah. Right, but again, like the little boy in church said, "Oh, pastor, I thought you meant today. I ain't trying to go today, right? Because you got to die if you're going today. Now, if you if, if, if he comes today and we're not dead, and those that will be changed will be changed. Those that are dead, do we get to watch that? Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. And how does that happen? And I always say again, just me, just me, just me. Like, what <laughs> sound is he going to use? to call all those yes. that have been dead yes. for all eternity. What does that sound like? Mm -hmm. I know I say it too often, but that's just where I get stuck, yes. right? Because I want to know what, because it says, like with the sound of what? What does it say before that? Voice with the sound. voice of the archangel. the archangel and the sound of the trumpet. Now that is just the author's best version of what he's trying to convey to you, right? Because it ain't going to sound like no trumpet that you've ever heard. And if, if anybody else in here ever heard the voice of an archangel? That must be amazing, right? Anyway, that is not our text either. Let's move along. <laughs> Let us therefore, as many as are mature, perfect, have this attitude and if in anything you have a different attitude, God will also, excuse me, God will reveal that also to you. Verse 15, let us, however, let us keep living by that same standard to which we have yeah. attained. He's saying you ain't attained perfection yet. I haven't got there yet. You ain't got there yet. But what we do have is a sanctification and a holiness and the standard that is given by this gospel that you do need to live by. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's continue on. Now, where we left off, you can catch up if you like to by looking last week and the weeks before on Facebook at Anselm. But we had a reference text. Again, after we had introduced this, 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 this theme, uh, this, what, what did we say? Forward, facing, future, focused, faith, right? And that's because the press on means I'm going this way. I'm going forward. That means there are things that I have to do. Now, I know there are things that I have done that I can look at and I can use. We talked about this morning. When you know that you've been through the storm, you can look back and you can call on that. You can see that what it's got, where God has brought you from. I don't know. I mean, touch one of them songs again, right? I don't. I don't believe somebody was playing before I went in here for a little while. I don't believe he brought me this far. That means I know where he brought me from. But I'm looking at that, leaning upon that because I gotta go forward. I, I know he ain't trying to leave me because he didn't bring me from where he brought me from just to do that. 
Amen. Amen. So turn to the book of Luke. The chapter is 9, the verse is 57. Luke 9 and 57. That was the reference text where we left off last time. We'll touch it again, and then we'll continue on in hopes of getting by here in the next 40 minutes because we have the sacrament to partake of. So Luke 9, Luke 9 and 57. It says, as they were going along the road, someone said to him, talking to Christ, I will follow you wherever you go. 58 says, and Jesus said to him, boxes have holes. Birds of the air have nets, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And again, I can remember my father conducting again the sacrament and saying those words hundreds, if not thousands of times. 59 says, and he said to another, Christ, speaking to one of those that were following, follow me. But he said, who he was talking to, Lord, permit me first to go and bury my father. My wife and I were talking and we were reminded that again, now, he ain't talking about burying his dad. He's talking about going to get his inheritance. Mm -hmm. And that ain't going to happen until daddy dies. Mm -hmm. Right? So he's saying, uh, I will follow you, but I will follow you when I get good, get, get good and well ready. Right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, I need some money the first time. Mm -hmm. Doing my research and looking at some stuff on, online because there are so many now that are falling by the wayside. There's a bastard that the same one who's who's putting the songs in his church, putting these worldly songs in his church um, every single week and just using this foolishness in the church, right? And he's saying, well, we're using the energy versions. And no, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get the attention of the young people, et cetera, et cetera. He says, he said, says, well, 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 God, you're, he says, you're trying to get your soul right, but God said, I'm going to get your money right first. Oh, I mean, just open an out. And, 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 I mean, just, and it is just absolutely appalling to, 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 to hear such things being broadcast from a pulpit. It's, and, 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 and those that are there need to be living in fear to sit under <coughs> such foolishness. Follow me, he said. Follow me, he says. And he says, well, I need to go get my money right first. Mm -hmm. Well, scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? And all those other things I'll take care of, right. right? That means my goal ain't got too much to do with me making a whole, whole, whole lot of money. That is not my primary goal. Does it that and now? If you have a job where you make decent money, ain't nothing wrong with that. If you are driven in that way, but you have God in you that he's going to, again, channel those, those motivations and those resources towards the gospel, right? No, he has those that are, that, 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 that are, that are born on this earth to make a whole lot of money so that they can go support ministry, right? He has those, and maybe, maybe you are one of those. Maybe whatever you make, again, it's kind of like, well, part of that, of course, is to to raise your children and to have a secure home, right? Mm -hmm. But those things, all of those things, every aspect of our life is given to him. And that's what he's saying here when Christ responds. And Christ responds by saying, again, allow the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim everywhere the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. He's saying, yeah, those things are worldly things. He's telling them, one said after that, another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first permit me to say goodbye to those at home. Now, if you look at verse 62, I don't know if they were mocking Christ by saying those things. They were dead serious. Um, but listen to how that sounds to uh, God on earth. This is God in part, right? They are talking to the great God of the universe and the person of the Son, Jesus Christ, and they're saying, "Lord, I got you, but uh, let me go. Let me go pick up a couple of checks first. Lord, I'll do that, but I gotta go speak to a few few people. So you're gonna wait on me, and then I'll come and follow you." Can you imagine to the ears of the great God out of the universe, a righteous and holy God incarnate? And listen to how the tone changes. He doesn't say again, well, 
oh, okay, I heard what you said. Let's sit down and talk about what you said. There are times, saints, where we have to stand, stand strong, and stand firm. And sometimes it don't sound pretty. Mm -hmm. right? Sometimes we have to take the stance, and that stance has to be a direct one. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we play with the words a little too much. Mm -hmm. Now, again, we do so in love because God, now, now a lot of times, that's the folks who, well, well, this person knows I love them, right? How do they know you love them? Because you get it paid for almost everything, right? Because you've already given your time, your love, your effort, your your, your phone calls, you've made the trip out, you transported, you dropped off, you picked up, right? Mm -hmm. And then if they don't know I love them, then something's wrong. And all the while you're trying to give them and tell them and witness to them about the example of Christ. But then every now and then you get back this feedback and it's like, well, Wait a minute, you know I love you. You know the testimony of God. I've been the example. Now I gotta tell you what you need to hear. Yeah. Christ says here, but Jesus said to him, No one after his putting his putting his hand to the plow and looking back, because we have a forward facing, future focused face. Christ says, No one looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Strong and direct words from God. He's saying, Okay, let me make this clear. The things of the earth are the things of the earth. Even those, those things that you think are the most important yes. things of the earth do not compare to those spiritual things that need be your priority. Yes. Uh, amen. This is a question, well, an answer of priority. Albert Barnes says, Albert Barnes is one of my favorite commentators. And Barnes says of this verse, he says, he that would enter heaven must come with a heart Full of love for God, giving all into his hands and prepared always to give up his property, his health, his friends, his body, his soul to God when he demands them, or he cannot be a Christian. Now, again, you're not going to come into a person who doesn't know anything about this faith, maybe like that, unless God has prepared you in that way to do so and prepared their heart to receive it in that way. But these are folks that were following him. These are folks that knew a little something about who he was and what he said. And he says, wait a minute, and you're talking about going to get your inheritance and going to say goodbye, going to have another family gathering. He's saying, no, you need to lay the things of this earth down in their proper place and prioritize yourself. We need to do that every single day. Yes. We need to say, what am I doing for him today? Right. That doesn't mean that you can shirk your responsibilities to your children, to your family, to your spouse, to your neighborhood, to any and all of those other responsibilities. But when you do them, is it with the kingdom in mind? That's what Christ is saying. Philippians, our text is Philippians again, uh, the third chapter. When Paul says, Brother, I do not, this is 313, I do not regard myself, excuse me, I do not regard myself as having laid old hold of it. He says, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward, that forward facing future focus face, reaching forward to what lies ahead. Paul says, I press on. When we reach and we strive and we are, we are, we are stretching. And again, the picture is the athlete reaching for the finish line. And his neck and his chin and his hands and his shoulders and his legs and his toes are pushing with everything to win the race. That's the picture. So when we do so, we are moving forward. We have to live by faith. That's what that means. Faith, our faith is going this way. Faith means I got, I got stuff to do and I don't know what's going to happen. Faith, faith means I got. I, 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 I'm dedicated to him. I know my mission. I know my direction, but I don't know all the details. Mm -hmm. What's that famous verse that we know of faith? Hebrews 11 and 1. And it says, now faith is the assurance of things what? Oh, Hoped for. And the convictions of things no, not, not seen. Why? Hope is going this way. I'm not hoping in what's behind. I know what happened already but i don't know what's going to happen but my hope hope don't mean again like i'm hoping i can pay that bill that's sitting on the dining room table right now the red notice because 
I don't know when the other check. But no, hope means assurance. Hope is assurance. So the evidence, excuse me, let's go back to Hebrews 11 and 1. It says again, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. The things that God has already promised and the conviction of things not seen. Forward facing. Romans 117 says, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. That means as you go, growing up in your sanctification process. Mm -hmm. It is written, but the righteous shall live by faith. Amen. The righteous are going forward. Yeah. The righteous are continuing on. There's a there's a, a, a bigger doctrine, uh, the doctrine of the perseverance of the saints. Amen. You've heard it, the perseverance of the saints. Now the strict theological perseverance of the saints, when it's Start, well, not when it starts. God's part in that is that he will carry you through and complete all that he has promised for you. Mm -hmm. That means the Christian will. Amen. The Christian will make it to glory. Amen. The Christian will go through all the trials and the tribulations. The Christian will because his promise is not corrupted. His promise is guaranteed, and it will happen. Again, those will stay. If you look at the, listen to those verses again, that, that you hear during the funeral, 2 Corinthians, I believe, uh, uh, 1558 and through, where he's saying, well, 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 now you've heard it, but, but, but let me correct you on some things, because they were worried that the folks that they had lost wasn't going to make it. They wasn't sure. Hey, Christ ain't okay. You're like, you're like, he ain't coming back. Yet. What, what, what is going to happen? Because you taught us this and we say we believe, and he's saying it will happen. It will. It's guaranteed. No way that anybody can take it from you. Galatians 3.11. You can write it down, and those of these are ones that we know. 3.11 says, not that no one is justified by the, excuse me, now that no one is justified by the law before God, it is evident for the righteous man shall live by faith. It is complete through scripture. The righteous man is going forward in Christ. He's going to live by faith. Both texts, both of those texts, the Galatians, the Romans, and uh, so many others are borrowing from the Old Testament. Habakkuk. Y'all know where Habakkuk is? Y'all still got Habakkuk in your Bible? <laughs> when was the last time you had a Lesson, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Go back. Second chapter and fourth verse. Go there quickly. Habakkuk 2 4. Habakkuk is the book, the chapters 2, the verses 4. Behold. Habakkuk 2 4. Behold, as for the proud one, his soul is not right within him, but the righteous will live by faith. Wait a minute. The right Habakkuk. Is writing under the law, right? Mm -hmm. But what is he talking about? Trusting God and going forward. He's saying the righteous shall live by faith. I'm back in 2 4. But the righteous will live by his faith, forward, not looking back. Mm -hmm. And again, contrasting the difference between the proud, the unrighteous, the self assured in and of themselves. He's saying the unrighteous man. Is trusting in himself. He's saying the unrighteous are looking at his is looking at himself and his abilities and trusting in himself. And he says it, his soul ain't right with him. But the righteous are trusting in God and they're going forward based on the promises of their heavenly father. Mm -hmm. Not looking back. Even in the old testament, the back of making a statement of faith while uh they were. Yet still under the law. A statement, though certainly for that time, is also infused with all the history of Israel from God's selection of them, slavery in Egypt, the Exodus, the 40 years in the wilderness, God's promise to Abraham, present day trials that Habakkuk was called to be this 
clock. These they, they are in the current and the here and now, but it's based on all of those things that he's saying you can look at your history and see what god has done but we got to keep going forward because the righteous will live by faith he's promised us what he's promised us and we got to trust him look where he brought us from that's what he's saying he's not saying let's go back there he's saying let's see that for what it is y'all goodness gracious when has he ever left him? never now you might have left him. Anybody left him? Don't tell him. Don't tell him. You ever left him for a little while? Because you went chasing? What was her name? What was his name? Right? Where did you have to go? Right? And then he he he, he and you got to a place and you're like, why in the world? Who what what what, what am I doing here? You, then you see the bill. And I just mean the cost. You see the cost. Mm -hmm. You see where you are. You see what it has cost you, especially those who know him. There's, there's texts in Hebrews when the Hebrews text says it'd be better that they had never known. Because he's talking about those folks that have the benefit of being in and around the church and the gospel and Christian folks, right? You ever notice the, the, the children of folks, the Christian folks who are rebelling, they, they got they have it hard sometimes, don't they? Sometimes harder than those who don't know, who have not been raised in such households. It's like, I know because you've had every benefit of the teaching, the love, the hedge, the comfort, the, the holding. If you've been in and around church folk, then you done seen what God you're still reject yeah. be weary you need to be weary think about going home in 2024 being a little more bold mm -hmm. say come in here sit down they ain't gonna want to they ain't gonna want to right they want to keep doing what they do and say no come in here and sit down now you've been but this verse is talking about you you're invited right and i'm not talking about my favorite verse 1911 of Revelation when we get the white linen and when we get to come rushing in with him for the second time and say, No, you're in this Bible too. And you got to be careful. You, you want to change. Now you can take another role because 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 God sent me here to tell you, He gave me the power to re you, you can cast yourself in a different role. Mm -hmm. He'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. But right now you're one of those in this Hebrews text that says you've been in and around, and it had been better than. You have never known because you know who he is because I've taught you and I've told you. Think about the brother or the sister that you know that just moved away and been doing their own thing for a long time. The neighbor who you've been been there for a while, you've got a great relationship with them. By the way, this Habakkuk text. Listen to Habakkuk. Go to Habakkuk one and one. Go to Habakkuk one and one and listen to Habakkuk's lament at the book of Habakkuk. Opens. Mm -hmm. Listen to it. This oracle which Habakkuk the prophet saw. How long, O oh Lord, will I call for help? And you will not hear. Mm -hmm. I cry out to you, violence, yet you do not save. Now remember some of these later prophets, right? Mm -hmm. This is during the time where God had been increasingly silent. He, he ain't talking to him like he used to, right? And there are these, these hallmark scriptures. There's the, the 800, the 500, and the 400. The 800 is the last time when God was actively involved with them, and they use it, use it as a marker again when, when, when the Hebrew boys were, 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 were in the fire. And God, then, then you can wait a minute. I, I know we put three in, yeah. but I see four, okay. right? Yeah. And he says that, and the other one looks like who? He looks like, the, well, he actually said, a son of the gods, because he wasn't a believer okay. until after this, <laughs> right? Okay. And even then, it was a questionable belief. It was one that just would be okay. He wasn't, he wasn't claiming that I know who he is. He's like, I know y'all didn't claim who he is. He don't look human, is what he said. 
It's like he looks like a son of the gods. I don't know what this is, but they you. One of the other markers is to give the Elijah and the Elisha, right? When, 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 so again, you have a 500 mark when God again stopped talking to them with the prophet or the older prophets. I maybe mix about the 800, it's 500, and 400 is that 400 years where he just shut up heaven and said, I ain't talking to y'all no more. So we have these prophets that are testifying God's testimony to them. But oftentimes, God has gotten a little bit more quiet because of the rebellion again a good testimony wait a minute you keep asking God only when you need him you keep going to him only when things are down when, when, when you lose the job when you ain't got no money when things are hard when things are tough when things aren't as they should be no you need to live for him every day the back it says how long oh lord will I call for help and you will not hear. I cry to you violence, yet you do not say. Why do you make me? Uh, why do you make me see iniquity and cause me to look on wickedness? Yet destruction and violence are before me. Strife exists and contention arises. Therefore, the law is ignored and justice is never upheld. For the wicked, for the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, justice comes out to hurt them. After that quiet time, and again, after that time, what did we say? We just came through the holidays, and what was the event that ended God's 400 years of silence? It's when he sent the angel and spoke with who? The shepherds. The shepherds. Before the shepherds was who? Mary. Mary, but before Mary was who? Zechariah. Zechariah. Yeah. When Zacharias is in the temple, God ain't said nothing to nobody for 400 years. Then it says, almost in passing, Zacharias is in the temple and he says, and the angel of the Lord appeared in the temple. Like, wait a minute, you've been going for 400 years and you just wait, wait a minute, right? And it says, obviously, Zachariah was scared to death, right? And what does the angel say? Do not be afraid. He's letting you know, I ain't talked to you for a while, but I ain't with you. I, you are still my people. Yeah. My plan ain't going nowhere. The angel was basically saying, nevertheless, mm -hmm. God's plan is still in place. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I ain't spoke to y'all for a minute, 400 years. But, but, your wife is going to have a baby. But, Zacharias, I have heard your petition. Mm -hmm. This has not been a question of me not hearing and not understanding. Now we're going to answer that question. I have heard and I do understand and I am here and my plan is still in place. Somebody who's waiting on God to do something for them. Beautiful story. You know what? God had some chosen people that he got quiet on for a good long while until they decided to again trust him. What are you going to do? And his plan is still in place and it ain't changing. Just because you ain't heard from him for a while. About it. As the Romans text and the Galatians text and the Philippians text. Does this not sound like an Old Testament prophet crying out to God almost in the name of the New Testament church? Because this almost sounds like the New Testament church and some of the things that you hear in eschatological, eschatological or the end times prophecies, right? Listen, both Paul and the writer of Romans and the unknown writer of Hebrews, excuse me, uh, Paul, the writer of Romans and the unknown writer of the Hebrews text quote the prophet the back of the Old Testament in their attempt to exhort the New Testament church. The Hebrew writer, quoting the back, trying to exhort those changed or now saved Hebrews. Paul, who was Paul uh, uh, charged as the, uh, as the prophet to? The, the Gentiles. Paul was called to the Gentiles, right? So everybody's represented here. So Habakkuk's lament here sounds so much like that's why they're borrowing, because wait a minute, let, let, because you're, you're 
so familiar, especially in the Jewish context, right? Uh, these people writing to these folks in this Jewish context, especially the Hebrew writer. Paul is saying, okay, but you know uh, of Athens. Let me tell you who he is and what he said. Reminiscent of the New Testament tribulation saints, crying from under the altar. Revelation 6. Turn to Revelation 6, 9. Habakkuk is just saying, wait a minute, oh Lord, where are you? Where did I see the Bible? If we open these doors right now, it won't take long for us to hear a sign. Revelation 6, 9. Verse 9 through 11. When the Lamb, somebody said last week, I think, somebody said last week when I, when, when you came up for the welcome, um, somebody said of their favorite text of scripture, the uh, the, the judgments, right? Mm -hmm. Who was that? Are they here? Some of the bold judgments or, 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 or the scrolls reminiscent of that. Anyway, uh, Revelation 6 and 9. When the Lamb broke the fifth seal and saw, I saw, John is saying, writer of Revelations, underneath the altar, the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they had maintained. And they, these are the tribulation saints, so, and they cried out with a loud voice, how long, O Lord, holy and true, will you re refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who dwell on the earth. And there was given to each of them. So, so the Lord is saying, I got you. I ain't going away. And he give them just, just a part or a portion of their reward in the form of what? The robes. Remember we talked about the robes dipped in blood? Yes. Christ's robe or the robe, those that have washed their blood, washed their robes washed in the blood of jesus and again we talked about our songs i've been washed in the blood oh yes i've been washed in the blood of the lamb talking about again or reflecting or referring to again the, the washing and cleaning of the robes here but again here they're calling and they're crying and they're saying we died and we died these horrible deaths in the name of the gospel and we have not given up our faith and there was given to each of them a white robe and they were told that they should rest for a little while until the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who were to be killed, even as they had been, would be completed. He's actually telling them enough people have died. He's telling them there are many more that will die just like you. Till such time, this is just a portion of your reward. They were faced with these insurmountable lies. Think about the tribulation saints. Um, we talked about if he came today, right? Mm -hmm. So if he came today, y'all going or y'all stay? Wait a minute. That's why. I just said if, if Christ came today, now unless you are post mill <laughs> or now, now, anybody who <laughs> pre mill, well, I'm in pre mill, post mill. That means millennial, right? Are, 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 are you going when it comes back, or y'all going to wait through the tribulation? Y'all <laughs> stay here if y'all want to. I guess that fits pretty well. Because I was going to ask y'all, like, you know, what, what do folks say sometimes, right? You know, if you don't plan to go, you can be on for yeah, tell me how it was. Because I ain't going, right? I ain't going. I mean, I, I'm not staying, should I say. I ain't going to the tribulation. I'm going back with him. So those that are faced with the faith, that were faced with these insurmountable, they, they were going to, they had seen people die. They stood on their faith in the midst of the tribulation. These were not folks that were saved when the tribulation occurred. Think about when Christ comes back. When Christ comes back, right, when the rapture happens, he takes everyone, everyone who believes with him. Yeah. So the earth, the entire earth is filled with who? Unbelievers. And that was, I know it seemed like that now, yeah. but it's still for folks praying today. Right? Y'all here today, right? Y'all know a few folks that's praying, right? I bet y'all know a whole lot more that don't pray, but we know a few, right? 
and we got those that are here. Everybody here gonna be gone. Nobody left on the entire earth except people who don't believe, which is just absolutely amazing to me. An earth full of folks who are not saved, then he's going to, never. there will be those who are like, wait a minute, I just went to church. And I heard this stuff for a long time. And mom and dad have been telling me, and they go on now, for sure, right? Uh, let me start reading this thing again. Then somebody knocks on the door and they say, do you want to believe? And it's going to be those, those who say, I was close, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to jump in with you now. Now they're going to be saved. And they're going to start to preach and teach the gospel. And they're going to die for the sake of the gospel after, in particular, after the three and a half year mark, after, 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 uh, uh, after um, uh, the Antipas mm -hmm. declares himself to be God and takes and, and, and just declares war mm -hmm. on any and all of those who are still or, or are declaring themselves as belonging to him because he has declared himself as God. And then we have the judgments and the seal judgments and the bowl judgments. And then we have the great tribulation and all those that will die as martyrs for those who will not take the mark. Mm -hmm. And he kills them. And he says, not enough people have died yet. Well, in the book of Acts, before that, there were also these odds that just didn't seem surmountable. Wait a minute, y'all, they killing folks. These emperors and these kings, and because we don't trust and believe in the Roman government, Acts 21 and 10. Acts 21 and 10. Acts 21 and 10 says, y'all got to catch up. I got to read quickly. The hour is late. As we were staying there for some days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. And coming back to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his feet in his hands. And this is what uh, the, he says. This is what the Holy Spirit says. In this way, Agabus is saying, the Jews at Jerusalem, because Paul was planning on going, will bind the man who owns this belt, belt, that's you, Paul, and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. When he had heard this, as well as the local residents, began begging him, Paul, not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, what are you weeping for? What are you doing, excuse me, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am not only ready to be bound, but even to die at Jerusalem, for the name of the Lord Jesus. Since he would not be persuaded, they fell silent. The marking, the will of the Lord be done. Mm -hmm. Paul saying, I gotta move forward. No matter the cost, I gotta move forward. Paul is saying, I'm moving forward by faith and I know what it's going to cost me to some degree. He goes on later, uh, I think actually in 18, um, where he similarly he says, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen to me except what awaits for me is, is, is bindings and whippings. Paul saying, forward facing, future focus, I'm going to live by faith. Hebrews 10, 38 and 39. Hebrews, the chapter is 10. The verses 38 and 39, but my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Strong language. You got to move forward. Verse 39, but we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to the, what did we talk about, the first persevering, in this case it says preserving of the soul. We press on. I love that MSB, excuse me, NASB translation because he says, verse 38, but my righteous one shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. It seems to emphasize he possessing you and you standing, even if you got to stand by yourself. Amen. My righteous one. in the midst of everybody and everybody and anybody and any and all who may not be mine, you might be the only one. You will be the only one in, on your block living by faith. You're gonna be the only one at the job living by faith. 
You might be the only one in the family living by faith. He said, but my righteous one, basically, nevertheless, you got to stay. My righteous one shall live by faith. And I ain't got no pleasure if he shrinks back. Living by faith. Moving forward. Reminiscent of and reflective of our the definition of sin that we use. Remember? Did you write it down in the back of your Bible? Let's give it to you again. We'll talk about it any given time because it comes up and it's a very effective definition. It comes from uh, 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 one of the church fathers, church fathers, origin, O-R-I-G-E-N. And the definition of sin, the lack of conformity to the revealed will of God and the refusal of the creature to be related to the creator by what? Faith. By faith. Again, if you want to write it down, I'll tell you now. You can ask me afterwards or, or I'll text it to you. That's <laughs> how things get done nowadays, right? The definition of sin or a good definition of sin. You can look in any one of your deal, but this one is the one that we use because it cuts things up very nicely for us. Origins, origins definition is the lack of conformity to the revealed will of God and the refusal of the creature to be related to the creator by faith. Now, if sin is defined as, again, the refusal of the cre cre creature, that's us. We were the created ones, right? Okay. So we're creatures. To be related to the creator by faith and the creator, the creator, we were required to worship only the creator. Because in the book it says, what, what is the first command? No. Thou shalt have no other God before me. You can't worship nobody. Just me. And you got to be related to me by faith. It gives us a chance to, I think we had said it a couple of weeks back, I was recovering in the, in the in the month of January, and we begin to touch on idolatry a little bit, and we're almost done five more minutes. Idolatry, or at least it's not as simple as we think of idolatry as statues and worshiping things. Or, or y'all know folks, y'all got folks in the family that got a little corner and they got some stuff in there, and you don't go in that closet, do you? Right? And you and you only you only spend too much time in that house, right? You let them have it. Um, Used to be some chickens running around here. They ain't running no more. Because all the chicken's feet is in that closet. You know, chicken ain't got no feet. It, it, it's, no. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> I'll have to tell the story again. Parole agent by trade. There's these things called the Santa Maria. Mm -hmm. These statues of skeletons, and they're dressed like men, mm -hmm. draping in robes and whatnot, right? And they're supposed to be the patron saints of evil and people who slang drugs. They have some very specific ones as well. Right. Searching and at the end, uh, on a search at the end of the bed, there are at least four or five, two or three foot Santa Marias, mm -hmm. right? And, and a whole table's worth full of other accessories, mm -hmm. ashes and burning things and all of this other stuff. And I'm there with Anaheim Police Department. And I'm in the other room and they say, uh, are you Nelson? Yes, I'm Nelson. They say, you might want to come in there. They had my name written on the piece of paper getting ready to be burned in the astro. Oh. <laughs> With the oils and whatnot. Right. Because I was kind of in the business because the parolee was staying there and I was telling the parolee why he's staying there. I said, man, not stay there. But they said, oh, you're Nelson, right? They said, your name is written down here a couple times. Wow. And it was like, whoa. Right? Immediately, you know who you serve. Wait a minute. Then you start going over the promises. Then you start thinking about who he is and what he's been and where he's brought you. And it's how many times have I been in this location or another location? 
And all of a sudden, and it's kind of like, wait a minute, now my name is on a piece of paper with skulls all around, and it's talking about, he says, but my righteous one will stand. Yeah. Sometimes you'll have to be in the midst of all kinds of God-awful foolishness, yeah. and hopefully, hopefully, trusting in him, you're going yeah. to be able yeah. to stand, yeah. just because of the faith, forward-facing, future focus that he's given you. You got to keep moving. I went to the room, saw the stuff, right? And it's like, I start collecting my stuff. Right but now, okay, wait a minute. Now it's well, you know, I, I got well, you know, take this and take that. And some stuff the person could have, and then, you know, it's kind of like, well, there's some stuff that becomes contraband and all of this other stuff, but you, you can't be moved by it. Amen. Yeah. And it puts your faith to the body. Yeah. Kind of like, well, well, let's see what it burned like, you know, <laughs> because they can't touch. Sure. Because yeah. when you talk about feeling protected. Yeah. And it's kind of like it. Oh, it got real. I still have the pictures. I don't know if I have them on my phone, uh, but maybe I'll bring them next week. Definition of sin. One form of idolatry, just one form, two more minutes. Just one form of idolatry. But idolatry is not just the idols and the worship of those idols. It comes in many different forms. And maybe we'll talk about some. Or it'll be a really good Bible study. Idolatry is, in one form, the worship of the creation rather than the creator. Mm -hmm. So when you begin to not worship God and worship the things he's created, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You begin to worship the things that he is creation. Worship, worship of the creation rather than cre the creator is just one form of idolatry. And that means you're refusing the creature. To even recognize the creator at all. You're recognizing the things he's created. Mm -hmm. It's creature worshiping creature. Mm -hmm. Creation worshiping creation. Whether they're creature or creation worshiping creator. Mm -hmm. That's linear, right? Once I'm in, in, in my job, if you want to transfer, sometimes they call it a ladder. Like, well, you're going this way, right? Mm -hmm. Same job or similar job and similar pay and similar. And then there's promotions that go up. Well, no, you need to be worshiping God. Creature, creature, worshiping creature is loud. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not going up. Yeah. It's going left or it's going right. Mm -hmm. And it is sin. Earth Day. Earth Day came about a few years back. Mm -hmm. Right, and they just begin to kind of worship the earth. It's kind of a form of idolatry. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't, you know, be responsible and not just use a whole bunch of stuff that you don't need and yeah, your, your, your footprint and all of that. Yeah, you should be responsible to God's earth, right? No, I can't be so wasteful. We should recycle. We should do these things that don't do damage. Amen. But I ain't worshiping the earth. Amen. I'm right. worshiping God Amen. by saying, Lord, we, we're honoring you by trying to keep the place that you gave us clean. Yeah. That would be great. Another form, and we'll stop here. Another form of idolatry is libel or slander. On the character of God. So the first one, not recognizing God as God, like worshiping something else, it's not even saying God is God. Another is recognizing God as God, but attributing to Him things that are not Him. An idolatrous heart assumes God as something other than He is, assuming God He is something that He is not, a perverted idea of who and what God is. Is we're talking about living by faith. The last, uh, the last part of our, our our definition of sin is the refusal of the creature to be re related to the creator by faith, and you do that by being idolatrous. One of those forms is idolatry, is slandering, or libel against God. One scripture, for folks, and we'll be done. Go to the Old Testament. Go to Exodus four and six. Excuse me, thirty-two is the chapter. Exodus thirty-two, four. Exodus. 32nd chapter. Verses 4 through 6. When Moses came down from the mountain, verse 4 says, And he, the brother of Moses, he in this case is Aaron, took from their hands and fashioned it with a graving tool and made it into a molten calf. What did he take for them from their hands? Took the gold rings and the earrings and the necklaces and 
these these gold pieces, right? These these pieces of jewelry, and he made it into a molten cat. Well, you just said, wait, wait a minute. Well, that's the other guy just serving statues and whatnot. But look at what they did. And they said, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. They're saying, Oh no, this is our real God. They're saying, Lord, we're recognizing you, but we're just gonna make you into a cat. So they're trying to or claiming to honor God, but they're changing him into it. They didn't just say, oh, we're calling it Baal or Beelzebub or calling it another name that's not God. They're saying, well, we want something that we're used to. We want something we can see. We want something we can touch. We want something that's earthly. We want something that's part of creation rather than create for. The molten calf, and they said, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Well, we know he brought them out of the land of Egypt, but the cow did that. Verse 5 Now, when Aaron saw this, he built an altar before him. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow, in the name of the cow, shall be a feast to the Lord. So now we're attributing God as a cow to the real God, slander or lie of calling or attributing to God something he was not. So the next day they rose up early and offered birth offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Y'all know what eating is? Y'all know what drinking is? Y'all know what playing is? When it says they sat down to eat and drink, they had these feasts that were associated with their worship. And now they got up and they began to play. To play in the Greek, not in the Greek, because in the Old Testament, it's what, what, what usually is. It means outright, the, the translation is chasha. Don't worry about how to spell it. That's the Hebrew word. And it means to laugh. Outright to play, to mock, or to scorn. They sat down and eat and drink, and they rose up to outright play, to mock, and to scorn. Now, the idea is carried with it. It's not just to play, to mock, or to scorn. So, it's to also to include, this includes the way it's used, being used here in the Old Testament, the drunken, immoral, sexual activities of the fertile, the fertility cults. They began to treat each other like prostitutes. They began to have they, they sat down to eat and they rolled up in an orgy. This saints is the blending of different forms of religions and philosophies, and y'all know both. You say, well, you know what? Well, I like a piece of that, and I'll take a piece of this, and uh, uh, well, I, I, I like how you worship here, and you know what? Christianity has some good things in it, and we'll take this. And we'll, yeah, they, the folks will say all the time. Time magazine will say the power of prayer. They ain't talking about praying to God. The one and only God of the universe. Amen? Amen. I lie. One more verse is Romans 121 and 23. They offered this unrestrained feast or party to the Lord, to the righteous God of the universe. They're saying we're going to have a party. We're going to make that town, and we're going to have an orgy, and we're going to call it our worship to the righteous God. Wow. One of the ways this is done is to make God, to lower him, mm -hmm. to make God cow, right? Mm -hmm. To make God more like me. People like doing that, right? That's why they say, well, God wants me to have this. Well, God put these feelings in me. Uh, no, he didn't, right? And, it, and, and whatever you're feeling, you're supposed to resist them. Yeah. Romans 1, 21 through 23, for even the, excuse me, so even, for even, though they knew, even though they knew God, they didn't honor him as God. I'm talking about idolatry here. They didn't honor him as God. They didn't honor him as God or Give thanks, but they 
became futile in their speculations and their foolish heart was darkened. Mm -hmm. Professing to be wise, because this stuff is also often attached to any number of philosophies, thought processes, they became fools. Y'all remember? The shoppers. Mm -hmm. I'm a little younger, but I remember there were some folks that we knew who did that stuff. Okay. Exactly. And it's back now, right? Exactly. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged, here we go, the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man, lowering God to man's status. In the image of the form of corruptible man and of birds and of four-footed animals and crawling creatures. Saints, if I can be, make God like me, then I can justify, justify my thoughts and my wants and my desires and preach and teach that God wants these same things that I want for me. There's a pretty prominent broadcaster he said the other day, well, he's not a Christian by any means. Well, I mean, goodness, if God wanted us to experience homosexual uh, love, then he, should, he, he wouldn't have put it in us. I mean, that's make Now, do what you do. You're going to say the same. But don't say God told you. Right? right. 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 The, the, the sin's always been there. Right. Right. The difference now is they want to say, well, these things are also of God. Yeah. Really quickly, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. But my thoughts are not your thoughts. You don't have to write it down. You know this one. Nor my ways, your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Yeah. Really quickly, the absolutely last point, I promise. Say, no, you didn't promise before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Luther, our, our 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 fellowship is reformed in in, in nature and thought and, and, and how we conduct. Martin Luther is one of the fathers of the Reformation, and he was rebuking one of the leaders of his time, Erasmus. And while doing so, he was telling Erasmus. Martin Luther is a monk, and he says of Erasmus, who was involved in any number of things he should not have been, he tells Erasmus, Erasmus, your thoughts of God are too human. Like you're thinking about God, but you're trying to make him like you. Your thoughts of God are too human. And I think we can, we can include in that. You're trying to lower You're trying to bring it down. Your thoughts of God are too human. We can add our thoughts of ourselves are just a little too divine. Yeah. So you want to lower God, you lift up yourself. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you. Thank you for your word. I thank you for those that love it, even when it convicts us. We can laugh, we can, we can, we can enjoy it. Even when it's cutting us just a bit. Because we know, Father, that even if it is part of your chastisement of us, your children, you're doing so because you love us. You're doing so because you want to recreate us and reform us into something that you can use as valuable tools in your hands so that we can be useful for your kingdom. It is in your name we pray. Let the church say, Thank you for the hour, saints. We try to go under. Sometimes we touch it out. God bless. Yeah. You can stand and open your bulletin, and we will do our doxology from the back. Yeah. Oh, right after the <laughs> That's the other reason we're supposed to be shorter today. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> the Corinthian church was a church that had a few problems. They were kind of haughty. They <laughs> Thought they knew much more than they should have thought of themselves. The institutions around that surrounded the church that had um, uh, the feasts associated with it centered also around the sacrament. Paul was teaching them and giving them instructions. He said in 11:24, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, that means the bread, and said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you, Paul, relating what happened, the supper. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, mm -hmm. saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We've got to persevere. This is part of the strength. This is just acknowledging his blood and his body. It has so much to do with our acknowledging or excuse me, are gaining strength in these troubled and trying times. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The elders will take it first. Check. We'll take the for the cup, uh, for the body uh, and the blood. This bomb. Heavenly Father, as we prepare to partake and obey the command to do so when we gather, we do so in faith, acknowledging your death, your crucifixion, your burial, and your resurrection. Uh -huh. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us this command, and we do so, Father God, honoring you, knowing that we honor what you have done for us. Yes. We do not do so lightly, Father. We do understand mm -hmm. and know that we are able to partake because of your righteousness and our that has been counted to us. Mm -hmm. So we pray to you, Lord. We thank you and we remember you, Lord, and we honor you in Jesus' name. The body of our Lord and Savior. Thank you. The blood of our Lord and Savior. Paul was addressing them because so many were taking advantage. So many had taken advantage of the feasts and the festivals. Mm -hmm. The tables were spread around the church, and the poor who did not have would come in. Those that were well to do would provide so much. But those that there were many who ate and drank to gluttony and to drunkenness. And he warned them. He says, Don't do this like you're honoring the one single and sole sect. That has saved you. Do not take it lightly. He says, and as a result of taking it, and you may go ahead and prepare to take it on your own. And as we're listening to the song, and as we're expounding on the scripture, he's saying, Be very weary because there are many as a result of taking it, as a result of not knowing, understanding, and honoring it. There are many sick to the moment. He's saying, Attached to this, if we don't take it in the right disposition, mm -hmm. 
then there may be some costs. Mm -hmm. It is talking to the church, however. And clearly throughout, he's telling them, well, rather he chastised you and you get it right, then you not take it. So honor him and worship him, his body and his blood. Amen. Pastor Ashley, uh, it's been a contact with him this morning as well. Recover, recuperating. Uh, he just asked me to sit in this, this Sunday as well. I'm honored to do so. This is all. <laughs> like literally, man. Yeah. Thank you guys for the love, for your hospitality. Did we get everybody? Yeah. If you can look at the back of your bulletin, we'll have one of the young people read the Apostles' Creed. Shall we stand? <laughs> I guess I'm a young person. Oh, yeah. okay. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, holy, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried the third day. He arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sin, and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. <laughs> We'll sing our benediction song. We begin with the men, men uh, opening the verse and the women pick it up. Uh, and we'll give some instruction throughout. All together, uh, just listen for the instructions all together. The Lord, Lord bless thee. I'm sorry, since I said all together, just the men verse. <laughs> just the men verse. Are we ready, guys? The Lord bless thee. And keep thee all together. The Lord make his face to shine upon on thee. All together. Gracious unto thee, and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance all together. Upon the end. Hey, good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, just because there's a 